Summary of the Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern A mystery circus called Le Cirque de Reves is introduced at the beginning of the book. It arrives without warning and is only open at night. This is where most of the story takes place, but it also goes to other places around the world and in the 19th and 20th centuries. After a short introduction that talks about the circus, no color at all, black and white stripes on a gray sky, countless tents of different shapes and sizes, with an elaborate wrought iron fence surrounding them, the story starts in 1873 in New York City. After his magic show, Prospero the Enchanter comes back to find a five-year-old girl waiting in his changing room. His daughter is Celia Bowen, and her mother killed herself, leaving the child and a note behind. Prospero, whose real name is Hector Bowen, is not interested in Celia until she starts to move teacups with her mind, which shows that she is naturally magical. He starts to teach her how to be a magician and sets up a meeting with Mr. A.H., who is also a magician and has always been Hector's competition. The two wizards have been going up against each other for hundreds of years, using their students as go-betweens. Hector wants Mr. A.H. to choose who Celia will compete against as his new opponent. They agree, so Mr. A.H. burns a ring into Celia's finger to make her take part in the race. Hector is teaching Celia magic, and Mr. A.H. gets a new apprentice in a shelter and starts teaching him magic at the same time. As part of the boy's schooling, he keeps him alone and takes him to see magic shows. When the boy turns 19, he gives him his own room in London. He gives himself the name Marco Allister and quickly meets Isabel Martin, a young woman who tells fortunes and has a strange past. She moves in with him. In the meantime, Chundresh Christophe Lefebvre, a theater director, has called a group of co-workers to his house for a midnight dinner. There, he will tell them about his new circus idea, which he says is like no circus anyone has ever seen. The group starts right away and soon finds a contortionist named Tsukiko. They then start to test illusionists. Marco, who has now become Chundresh's assistant, sees Celia Bowen's tryout and knows that she is his competition rival. As soon as he tells Isabel about this, she offers to go with the circus and watch over Celia and her magic shows. She writes Marco letters as often as she can, but Marco doesn't get enough from them. The colorful bonfire is lit on the first night of the circus, and at the same time, one of the performers goes into labor. The twins are born, and the other performers name them Widget and Poppet. They become very important to the circus, and each learns a different magic skill. For example, Widget can see into people's pasts, and Poppet can see into the future. Marco has cast a spell on the circus that is rooted in the fire, making the circus itself magical. He doesn't know about the real magic going on in his venue, and Marco has to regularly erase his memory to keep him from realizing what's going on. The circus organizers, such as engineer Ethan Barris, Tara and Lainey Burgess, and others, start to feel like they are not aging properly. When Tara goes to talk to Ethan about her worries, he sends her to talk to the man in the gray suit, Mr. A.H., who knows a lot more than he lets on. But right after Tara talks to the wizard, she feels a strange urge to jump in front of a moving train and kill herself. Lainey, her sister, comes to talk to Ethan about the tragedy. He tells her that he knows what's going on in Le Cirque de Reves, but can't say anything because he agreed to keep it a secret. In fact, Ethan knows all about Celia and Marco's fight and has decided to build a tent called the Labyrinth so that the two of them can perform together. In the year 1902, a young man called Bailey Clark goes to see Le Cirque de Reves for the first time. A few years ago, on a dare, he sneaked into the circus during the day. One of the workers told him to leave, and she gave him her glove as proof that he had been there. He goes to see Isabel during this trip and she tells him that he is part of a chain of events, but she doesn't say what those events are. She also tells him that he is looking for Poppet. When he meets Poppet, it turns out that she is the artist who gave him her glove years ago. They end up becoming friends, and Bailey gets free circus tickets for life. Poppet is friends with Bailey for her own reason, she has a vague picture of something bad happening, and Bailey saves the circus and all of its acts. She doesn't know when it will happen, 
but she is sure Bailey is a part of the answer. A lot of people are becoming interested in Le Cirque de Reves because of her Friedrich Thiessen's work on the clock that sits in the middle of the circus. They meet with Ethan Barris, and her Thiessen makes him a clock. He then doesn't hear from him again. A friend talks about the clock while they are on vacation in France and asks him to see it at the circus. Thiessen feels so strongly about Le Cirque de Reves that he writes a newspaper piece about it that is shared all over Europe. A group of circus fans called Reverse get together for this. Many of them follow the circus all over the world. They are known to wear mostly black and white with a single red accessory like a scarf or hat. They also have a secret way of telling each other where the circus is going next. Thiessen starts writing to Celia Bowen, but he doesn't know that she is the circus's illusionist. The two become close friends and stay that way until Thiessen's death. They are more and more interested in each other as they get to know each other better. Marco knew that Celia was his opponent as soon as he saw her act, but Celia didn't find out who her opponent was until years after she joined Le Cirque de Reves. Even though Celia didn't know who he was, she felt a strong link to him, especially when she entered Marco's ice garden. Marco felt the same way when he entered Celia's wishing tree. When Celia accidentally takes Marco's umbrella from a cafe in London, she finally learns that he is her rival. As he runs after her to get his umbrella back, she realizes that he has put a protective spell on it that will keep her much drier than a normal umbrella would. Their guardians, Hector and Mr. A.H., don't like it when the rivals talk during quiet times, they often stop them or tell them that they should be competing against each other instead of falling in love. Hector Bowen is now a ghost, which means he is officially dead but can still show up to people whenever he wants. He watches over Celia and scolds her for working with and dating the man who should be her enemy. He tells his teacher, I'm in love with her, after having a talk like this with Mr. A.H. he then walks into the hall, where Celia is dancing with her Thiessen, and kisses her. Then, by some magic, he erases everyone's memory of that moment. But it is a turning point in his relationship with Celia, as they both realize how deeply they love each other. It's also a big deal because Isabel, who has always been wary of their relationship, hears Marco and Mr. A.H. talking and decides she needs to leave the circus so she doesn't get in the way of their relationship. Before she leaves, Isabel breaks a spell she had put on the circus to keep it safe, which puts the people who work there in danger. At the same time, Chundresh is looking for Mr. A.H. in the circus grounds to kill him. He is very drunk and has just had a chat with the ghost of Hector Bowen. He throws a knife at the magician, but the magician dodges it just in time. The knife hits and kills her Thiessen, which adds a sad note to Le Cirque de Reves. When Marco and Celia learn that their fight has no end point and will only end when one of them dies, they become very upset. They try to think of ways to end it but fail, and they both offer to kill themselves to save the other. Marco talks to the contortionist Tsukiko about the race and finds out that she, too, used to work for Mr. A.H. The other person in the competition set herself on fire, which helped Tsukiko win. Started a fire column and walked right into it as if it were water. He should follow her lead, she tells him, because Celia is more important to the show. As Marco starts to burn himself to death, Celia jumps into his arms. They are magically taken through the fire and end up deep in the circus, where they are neither dead nor alive. The game must be called a draw because they stay together in the circus forever. The center blaze of Le Cirque de Reves has gone out, which is bad because the circus can't go on without it. Celia and Marco know they need to find someone to start the fire again and run the circus so it can keep going. They figure out that Bailey Clark is supposed to take care of the circus by remembering Poppet's image of destruction and rescue. His mother, Celia, tells him that he has to carry a piece of the circus with him, tied very tightly to the circus itself. Bailey agrees and carefully does what she says to light the fire again. The story now takes place in Paris in 1903, where Widget and Poppet are talking to Mr. A.H. about ending the fight between Celia and Marco and taking over Le Cirque de Reves. He agrees and gives Widget the circus in exchange for a story, the story of the circus. The circus comes without warning, 
Widget starts his story with the first line of the night circus. About the author. Erin Morgenstern was born in Marshfield, Massachusetts, and she attended Smith College, where she majored in both studio art and theater. A writer and multimedia artist, she has made her own deck of tarot cards under the name Phantom Lies. As part of National Novel Writing Month in 2005, she wrote The Night Circus. It came out in 2011. The Starlet Sea, her next book, came out in 2019. Her husband and she live in Massachusetts. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.